Hello and welcome to Algebra 2, Chapter 8.8, .8, and today we're going to be discussing logistic growth functions. So here is our basic equation for a logistic growth function. Uh, we are noted that A, C, and R are all positive constants. Um, e is the value E, X and Y would be your variables. And so based on this form, this is going to actually help us graph it. So let's first look at what is this going to graph. So this is going to graph a function that looks like this, where um, we have, here's our y-axis and our x-axis down here. And um, you know, where the other graphs we graphed this chapter have, have gone you know, on to infinity as they go up or down, uh, this one we are going to say has a carrying capacity and so this could model a few different things um, but it, let's think like the deer population of Pot County there's a maximum amount of deer that can actually even stand in Pot County at one time and so maybe this line is that and so as it approaches that line it has to get less and less growth because we can't support any more deer than that or maybe it's um, the height of a tomato plant, right? There's a maximum height of a tomato plant. Now, some can be quite tall, but they can't be 20 feet tall, right? So uh, as they might grow rapidly to begin with, but as they approach that maximum height, their growth is going to slow down. And so that's what a logistics growth function is. So knowing that we have a logistics growth function and it comes to us in this form, we can find several things before plotting our points to graph it. So first of all, you're going to have two asymptotes. Uh, why is zero is one asymptote? Because you can't have, a, I mean, it's going to decrease, it's never going to reach zero. And then y equals c is your other asymptote, so c just being the value on top. We are also going to have a y-intercept. Our y-intercept is c over 1 plus a. Okay, and that, so that value is your y-intercept. Your domain is going to be all real numbers because we're going to go left and right forever. Um, but our range is only going to be between 0 and c, not equal to either of those since those are asymptotes. The graph we'd say is increasing the entire time. We are gaining in our population. Um, to the left of the of the point of maximum growth, the rate is increasing more rapidly, and to the point of the right of the maximum growth, the rate is, in, is increasing less. And so our point of maximum growth, ln a over r is our x, and c over 2 is our y. So let's try to apply all of this to a graph. So make sure you have all that written down. Okay, so before we can get to the graph, we got to make sure that we can evaluate so can you plug in these numbers and figure out what f of f of negative 2 is, f of 0.9? So just in your calculators, and you're going to need to put parentheses around the entire bottom part. Make sure that you are trying it out. And let's go to three decimal places. So for the first one, I get 0.917. So make sure you put that in your calculator. Try the second one. Kind of recall the first one and just change it. For the second one, I get 5.067. For the third one, I get 9.838. And for the last one, I get it's 9.999, which you could also say would be about 10. Now, 
Remember that 10 here in this case is an asymptote, so it can't actually be 10, but it'd be really, really close to 10. So let's try graphing. So the first thing that I would find would be what are my two asymptotes? So your asymptotes, you always have a 0, y equals 0, and in this case we also have y equals 3. So the deal is, you know, do I, do I kind of draw my asymptote here and try to fit the whole graph under that? Or would a better way to be to count by something other than ones? So let's count by two. Well, let's count by halves, and let's make one be right there. Um, oh, the other one we can still count one, two. So I have one asymptote at zero, and you don't have to draw them in, but it might help you draw in the, the graph. And one, two, that's two, there's three. We got an asymptote at three. So we're going to be between those points. So we might want to find our y-intercept. And our y-intercept is at c over 1 plus a, keeping in mind that our logistics growth function, let me write it out real quick since it's on another page for me, um, 1 plus a e to the negative rx, that's an x, okay, we're going to go with that being an x. So my y-intercept is 3 over 1 plus 5, which is 3 over 6, which is a half. So my y-intercept is going to be there. Okay. So what about my point of maximum growth? So that's kind of the turning point from where it goes to increasing rapidly to increasing not so rapidly. So if I call it my point of maximum growth, which we wrote was LNA over R, C over 2. So that's going to look like LN 5. Now R would be just 2, not the negative 2, because the negative is part of my formula. And then C is 3 over 2. So LN 5 divided by 2 is point. 805 and then 1.5. All right, so let's find that. About 0 0.8, 1.5, I think would be there. All right, so you could probably go ahead and draw in this side of your graph. It's going to go down like that. Let's pick one more point, though. Let's pick, oh, like two. And let's just evaluate our function at 2. And I get 2.748. So at 2, we're about there. And then we can finish drawing this in kind of on the other side there. Remember, it should not touch those asymptotes. All right, so there's your graph of your logistics growth function. So using uh, your y-intercept, your point of maximum growth, and then you could actually use any other points, but you probably need to use some. Don't just draw it in. Let's plot a few points, and you have your graph. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is solving these. Uh, I think the easiest way would be to um, perceive this as a proportion and let's cross multiply. So we're going to get 30 equals, and if I write it out without distributing at the moment, it's going to be 10 times 1 plus 5e to the negative 2x. But remember, we take you know 10 times all of that. So this is 30 equals 10 plus 50e to the negative 2x, and that works there. Uh, so in the next step, if we go ahead and move the 10 over, 
and get 20 equals 50e to the negative 2x. And then we can divide by that 50, because it's 50 times e. So 20 divided by 50, you could leave it as 0.4. You could, if you wanted to make it into um, two-fifths, you could, but we'll just, we'll do a fraction. 0.4 equals e to the negative 2x. All right, so the next question is, well, how do I get rid of e? Well, the best way to get rid of e is to take the natural log of both sides. So if we do ln to both sides. ln of 0.4 is negative 0.916 equals this side just becomes negative 2x. So we get x by itself. Let's divide by negative 2. And for a final answer, I get 0.458. So I'd like to solve one more just to make sure you got the hang of it, okay? Um, so again, I would look at it as a, fra as a uh, proportion and cross multiply. So you get 45 equals 25 times 1 plus 8e to the negative 1.5x. And then if we distribute the 45, in all honesty, you could actually divide by the 45, or not the, distribute the 25, but you could um, divide by 25 to start with if you wanted to. So if we do 25 times 8, that's 200. Let's get it in here, 200e to the negative 1.5x. Okay. Then I would move the 25 to the other side. Remember, your goal is to get e by itself here. So that's 20 equals 200 e to the negative 1.5x. And then you can divide by that 200 because it's not attached to the exponent. So 200, 20 divided by 200 is 0.1 or a tenth e to the negative 1.5x. And then to get rid of that e, you're going to take the natural log of both sides, because that's log base e. ln of 0.1 is negative 2.303 equals negative 1.5x. And just finish up by that. <laughs> Let's try that again. Finish up by dividing by negative 1.5. And your final answer is x equals 1.535. All right, so now you have solved for x within a logistics growth function. That's all I have for you today. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you in class next time. Have a good day.